Hi everyone, it's Allie and I'm here to do your week ahead reading. Uh, so today is Sunday the 25th of July. Um, oh god, all the pets are coming in. Here we go. I know, hi. Okay, hopefully this will be alright. We'll see. I'll take another crack at it if it isn't. Uh, so today I'm going to be using the Way Home Tarot. This is an independently published deck by Bakara Wintner and Autumn Whitehurst. I always have to check that. And I actually just this afternoon recorded another episode in my Everything I Have Learned From Insert Tarot deck here using the Way Home Tarot. Uh, and it just really got me so jazzed for it again. I love this deck so much, you guys. So I thought I'd use it for my week ahead reading as well. Oh. Shuffle. Wow, usually this deck is a great shuffler. What's going on? Let me try that again. Jeepers. I hope everyone had a nice week. So I'll release that other video. There we go. Oh, yeah. I'll release that video probably on Tuesday or Wednesday this week just to spread things out a little bit. I just had some time today and I was really jazzed to talk about this deck. I've also got my Connected and Free Oracle out. I might pull a card from that uh, just because these two decks just go together beautifully. Mm. All right. Let's see what we've got. What do we need to know for this week as we go forward? Interesting. Okay. So uh, we have so interesting. The Eight of Swords. This is one of the cards I actually talked about in my video today. We have the Eight of Pentacles. And we have the Nine of Pentacles. So this is a very earthy, very nature-based deck. Um, not entirely an animal-based deck. Uh, a lot of plants and trees and that kind of stuff. So not a lot of people in here. Influence of people sometimes, but not a lot of people. Okay, so um, the good news is there's abundance and plenty coming. The bad news is, according to the cards, we're in this Eight of Swords space. Right, so feeling kind of stuck, uh, feeling limited, and in the traditional Waitsmith, I don't have one out, no, I don't, um, but it's uh, the woman who's bound and blindfolded in a ring of swords. Um, now, in the Waitsmith, the ring of swords is not perfect, it's not a complete ring. There's a very clear path that she can get out of the ring of swords. She's surrounded on some sides, not on all sides. Now, the reason I talked about this one today, we have a little firefly. <laughs> it's not the only firefly in the deck either. There's one on the hermit card. Um, and he is uh, in this ring of swords, which is a perfect circle, but he could get out of it, right? Because he's just a little firefly, <laughs> little kitty. And, um, and additionally, what I really like about this card and why I talked about today's little sneak preview of my video that's coming is that the light that he's giving off actually makes it seem sort of more ominous and scary, right? That we've got the shadows cast by the sword and everything about the situation looks sort of black and white. But the reality is the light that he possesses allows him to see how he can get out of the sword if he can just get off of his back and do it. And this to me is very much the spirit of the Eight of Swords card, right? That you feel bound and tied in, limited in at least one direction. But there is a path out and either you just have not been able to see it, it has not made itself apparent to you yet, or you know what it is, but you're looking for another way around it, which is just so human and so relatable, right? That often these are really difficult choices or difficult conversations or, you know, whatever the situation is that makes you feel like you're trapped. The Eight of Swords is telling you that you have within yourself the tools you need to get 
out of it, but it just doesn't feel like you do at the moment. So in the context of this spread, um, I'm going to just move on. So that's the first card. The second card, well, actually, let me just jump to the, this is, so this is good news. This is coming. This is all part of this spread. But to get to here, this abundance of the nine of pentacles, right? Like just the good things that are around you and to celebrate that abundance and feel that satiety and that wholeness. There's some eight of pentacles. Now, eight of pentacles to me, when I look at it on its own, I think of it as a card of practice, of craft, of honing your skill, right? Really putting together something that you do. But in the context of these other two cards, I sort of get the sense that for this week, this is a like inner work and thought, sort of breaking down what it is like this craft of being you and making your own decisions, right? This practice. Um, so for example, I'll, I'll be personal. I am a person who is conflict averse. I like to smooth things over. I like to accommodate. Um, if there's a conflict around me, I'll just try and find a solution and jump in and do it. Even if it's not really my place or maybe if it's just going to paper over a problem that would be better if I stayed out of it. I have to really resist the temptation, often unsuccessfully, to just go in and try and solve things. But I know that about myself. And I actually have done a lot of self-examination about why I am that way and what it is that makes me that way and the habits that I can fall into. So I feel like, like this is the kind of practice and work, a sort of soul for work. And actually, isn't this deck amazing? Like if we look at what's in the middle of the pentacles, it seems more than just that earth element, mundane practice of the world. Now, again, I love this card for practicing a craft. It can be so practical, right? Like the nitty gritty. So again, to be personal, so I like to write. And like the nitty gritty personal elements of really going over sentences and phrases and paragraphs and finding the best words and practicing those types of things. I just love that and anything you do that practical. But in this, in this particular spread right next to the eight of swords, which is so much an internal card about what's happening on the inside that is limiting you um, from moving ahead that's how I'm interpreting the card in this particular situation. And then we have, again, finishing off the reading, this nine of pentacles, this abundance that's coming if you put in the work to get there um, or to figuring out what it is. It depends on where you are with your eight of swords feeling, um, but it needs a little bit of work and a little bit of self-examination. And if it's a social skill, like again, for me, not jumping in to solve things, not papering over problems, immediately solving just to resolve a little conflict that's just going to continue to simmer. Um, that's a skill I have to actively practice um, in my own life. So let's just let's just do a little connected and free because I haven't used this oracle. I haven't used an oracle on one of these readings in ages. I always say I might, and then I feel pretty good with the three cards, and I feel good about these cards. But I just want to pull an oracle card, you guys, and one jumped out. So let's take a look here. Okay, fear. Well, that is a perfect companion, I think, to what's keeping you perhaps from getting out of here, this Eight of Swords, right? Fear of what's gonna happen, fear of making a wrong decision, fear of closing a door. If I, oh God, uh, fear of closing off options has kept me in so many Eight of Swords circles, I can't even tell you, so. Okay, so that's the thing this week. What is it that is holding you back? And uh, and maybe it's an even like negative self-talk. That can be a huge one for the Eight of Swords. And what concrete skills are you going to practice within yourself to counter that, to move you out of that Eight of Swords circle, shine your little firefly light, and get to that Nine of Pentacles. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed doing it. And have an awesome week.